Another one that should be looked into. And in order for us to even understand that, Robert, we have to find the Godfather one where the brother, the lawyer, Tom Kagan, goes into the brothel in Nevada. Remember that? That remote brothel in Nevada? Do we have that ready to go? Another I have to bleed through the eyeballs and ears to get something when I asked for it two hours ago. I still don't have it, okay. Maybe about after 3 o'clock when the show is over, we can get all the sound bites I really need. I'm in a sweat right now. I'm turning red. The neck, the vein in the neck just expanded. That would have been a great, a great moment to play that, but don't have it. Don't have Camino de la Vida, no. Okay, I get it. I'm the only one who... I put too much... And, and I know that I could not have heard. This girl has no family. Nobody knows that she worked here. The business she never existed. All this is our friendship. Now, that's awful. That's not the right soundbite. It's a, a piece of a broken soundbite that I would not ask for. Yesterday we had the whole piece that was much better. Try to find it for the next break. That's all. Let's move on. WMAL, Charles, go ahead. You're calling about Tim Cook of Apple. Is he right or wrong? Uh, could they eventually be charged for as an accomplice with the jihad phone with the terrorists? I don't know. I think that he should be held in, at least in contempt of court. He was ordered by a federal judge to access encrypted data hidden on the cell phone that belonged to the Muslim terrorist couple who killed 14 people. And he's blocking a murder investigation. Actually, he's blocking a federal terrorist investigation, which is a federal crime. Should he be charged? They should put him in handcuffs is what they should do. And force that company to comply because we're all at risk here. How many other terrorists could be found through that phone? How many do you think? We don't know. Who were they calling during the, the, the chase that no one could find out where they went, right? They were calling somebody. Yes, sir. Now, look, I believe in privacy rights. I live on privacy. I don't want the government snooping on me. This is not a broad, scattershot court order. It's a very limited court order, limited to that specific phone, which, by the way, was owned by the company, not owned by Saeed Freak. Thank you for the call. No, I believe that the government should crack down on him and demand that he either comply or put him in prison. And the thing is this. Remember this, Apple is so embedded with the Obama administration that I don't believe that the Obama administration will help the FBI in this case. And they should. WSBA in Pennsylvania, what do you think? Go ahead, please. Yes, uh, Mike, thanks for bringing uh, the despicable Tim Cook to the forefront. He's aiding and abetting the enemy, and uh, we're in a cyber war. I called his office and left a message, uh, and you'd have been proud of the... Uh, obscenities that I left uh, made me feel good. Uh, no, no, no. We don't leave obscenities on phones. But why are you so involved in this particular issue? You're just a caller to the show. How did you come to even make this such a personal thing? Uh, because on MSNBC, they had uh, the T-Mobile guy said, well, Tim Cook and I, we have our, we have our uh, uh, honor. And we can't, you know, I wanted to leap through the... Uh, oh, okay, so you got mad at the, at the false... Uh, the false story they're putting out that they're doing it for the for the privacy of all Americans and since it was on MSNBC you know the opposite is true they're covering for terrorists in this case Muslims that's all they're doing well thank you for bringing your unique subjects to the forefront all the time well notice how I tied the Tim Cook case or the Apple case if you want to put it that way with the Scalia cover-up if there is a cover-up both issues involve one common thread which is privacy and yet, because Scalia was a public figure, we, are, we, are, we have to look at it a different way than an ordinary citizen would be looked at. That's number one. And number two, this issue of uh, breaking into the phone of a, of a known terrorist who already committed murder is also separate from the ordinary individual and his, and his, and his or her iPhone. It's that, that's the whole story. Now, the family of the deceased judge, Eugene Scalia, said the opposite. He went on a show and said, I, it's hurtful distraction for a family this morning. He doesn't want anyone to look into it. That's very interesting that the, the son would say he doesn't want anyone to look into it. The pillow, the pillow. Uh, younger Scalia said Wednesday on the, t on the radio show that his father would have been the first to tell you that we're from dust. We return to dust. Your life could be taken from you at any instant. What does that mean? What does that have to do with anything? I don't understand what that means. Our family just has no doubt that he died of natural causes. Okay, good. And we accept that. That's fine. We're praying for him. That's fine. We ask others to accept that and pray for him. That's fine. But we also want the truth to come out.
there are too many elements of this story that have not been disclosed. And I would say respectfully to the Scalia family, we are entitled to the answers to these questions. It was a little too convenient that they hushed the whole thing up, rushed the body out of there, no doctor, no local law enforcement, no investigation, no discussion of who the other guest was or the guests were, no discussion of who paid for his charter flight, no discussion of who paid for the hotel. I'm sorry. That goes beyond the family's right to privacy. He's not a pizza shop owner from Staten Island who died in Atlantic City. Okay, this is a much bigger story, especially since the next day before the body was cold, the president's already screaming he's going to put a <coughs> left-wing fanatic on the Supreme Court <coughs> and gloating about it, no less. KLIF, Ryan, <coughs> sorry, you know, KLIF's an important station to me right now. I was moved from WBAP to KLIF abruptly at the end of the year. My ratings are so high on KLIF, people are saying, oh, my God, look what just happened here. I'm so popular in Dallas that I'm thinking of doing a three-city three sweep, a KLIF, a WMAL, and a WABC. I always think of these things, then I don't do them, because my comfort zone is so great at my home studios. Every I thought about it this morning. I got 5,000 sheets of paper in front of me. I know where everything is. Every paper I could access on the stack and stack of paper, I have an uncanny ability, like a magnet on my fingers. I can pull up a story out of nowhere. When I travel, it's a little different. I'm very limited. I do a different kind of show. It's more exciting, maybe, but I don't know. I'm so comfortable at my home studios that I think I'll travel. I'll be right back. Deprisa como el viento, van pasando los días y las noches de la infancia. Anyway. The wrong song. I said El Camino de la Vida. This is something about toilet paper. Okay, wrong song. Unbelievable. I, I have to do everything. I have to produce the sound. I have to produce the this. It's it's shocking. Not their fault. I, I demand too much. I want a 16-piece orchestra. I have a two-piece orchestra. It's no one's fault. It's the fault of the apple. KLIF, Ryan, welcome to the Savage Nation. Ryan. Keep the phone in in their um, laboratory. Don't give it back because once you give the FBI or the NSA the keys to the encryption, you've opened Pandora's box and you've destroyed all security. The government has been unable to complete the search because it cannot access the iPhone's encrypted content, says U.S. Attorney Ellen Decker. Apple has the exclusive technical means which would assist the government in completing its search, but has declined to provide that assistance voluntarily. Now, here's a key point. The iPhone 5 was given to Syed Farouk by the San Bernardino County Health Department and was used in his job as an inspector. So therefore, it's not even a privately owned phone. It's a company-owned phone. Doesn't that change things? I don't believe so. The, the encryption keys are... It's a company asset. All right. Well, I think the FBI knows best in this case, and I'd like to know who Farouk spoke to after killing people. Wouldn't you? Let's not lose the forest for the trees. Who was Farouk speaking with as he was evading the police after the bloodbath? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Los Caminos de la Vida, the road of life. That's the road we're all on. We're all little burrows climbing up the hill every day. Now here we are sitting in America on the cusp of a disaster that's unprecedented in American history. 
a demonic president who, irrespective of how Alito died, immediately jumped in the breach and said, you know what, I'm not going to wait. You know what, I'm not going to appoint the moderate. You can drop dead. I'm putting on a fanatic leftist. Anyone who opposes me, you know what they can do, don't you? We'll send them a pillow for Christmas. So we're talking about that. That's why the issue of privacy goes out the window. It's not an ordinary man on the road of life who's in his old age, died in his sleep. That's not the story. The story is the cover-up. The story is the quickness. The story is the phones were dead at the lodge. The story is that the two justices were suddenly av not available and they find a crackpot, someone named Cinderella, no less, with a glass, a glass brain, not a glass slipper, who can't pronounce, pronounce the word myocardial infarction. Now, you're relying on her, Judge Cinderella, and you keep thinking I'm making the name up. Now, this is too much for fiction, isn't it? Here is the judge trying to justify what she did in clip one. Please play it, Robert. One of the things that I did ask the sheriff and the marshal that was there, if there were any signs of foul play, and what they said, say? absolutely not. And then at that time, I still wanted to be careful, and that's why I asked if the physician would call me. His heart did stop. On the death certificate, it'll say myocardial, myocardial infarction. Myocardial? Okay, I can keep saying it over and over again, but you know it says it a lot. What I'm saying is you have a rather, uh, let us say, uneducated country bumpkin, uh, and you're relying upon her word for all of this. I'm sorry, I don't accept it. That's number one. Number two, she gets a call from the sheriff, and the phone was dead at the ranch. Number, th I mean, number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Every homicide detective in America knows that this case has not been covered properly. And then on the other side, you have people, oh, leave it alone. Old man died in his sleep. Let it go. Nothing to see here. Move on. Then you have the issue of privacy. I think that we all abandon our privacy when we become public figures, don't we? That's anyone in the media's fair game. That's why mud is thrown at us. That's why people are allowed to say things about us that are false. We're public figures. And we give up privacy in order to take on the roles that we take, whether we're in politics or the media. That's unfortunately the, one of the prices that we all pay. And so, no, the issue of privacy in this case goes out the window. He's not entitled to privacy at this point. Sorry to say it. Now, coupled with the issue of privacy <clears throat> is Apple Computer. Apple Inc. CEO Tim Cook says defiantly his company will resist the federal judge's order to access encrypted data hidden on a cell phone that belonged to the terrorist couple, Malik uh, Farouk, whatever, who assassinated 14 American citizens in a blood fest in San Bernardino last year. Now, why would he do that? He knows that the American people are worried about the next terrorist attack. He knows that the FBI could probably find some of their accomplices if he helped them uh, break the encryption. And yet he says no. So many of the leftists are saying, yeah, he's right, right on, he's protecting our privacy. Well, there's a couple of problems with that argument. First of all, the phone was not owned by the individual, it was owned by the county of San Bernardino. That's number one. It's a, it's a company phone. Secondly, Apple normally complies with law enforcement when presented with a search warrant or judicial order, but in this case, they're not. So why are they aiding and abetting? Why are they aiding and abetting the terrorists? I mean, how else do I put it? Why are they? Let's put it another way. Why are they blocking the FBI's access to who, who was called during that, def, that chase? The government has been unable to complete the search because it cannot access the iPhone's encrypted content. Only Apple has the exclusive technical means which assist the government in completing its search. Well, that's interesting unto itself. So all of you privacy fanatics out there, hey, no, no, give the government the power. You're not a pure enough conservative. Apple's 100% right. So it means Apple could be snooping on you. Right, Robert? Doesn't that what it means? So now you rely upon Tim Cook and the, and, and the, the, the ghouls who work at Apple that they're not spying on you? So you're already being spied on. In this case, I want the terrorist phone to be open to see who they were talking to. End the story. WABC, Dennis, what do you think about this case? 
Well, I'm wondering why they were not going to use the Patriot Act and the 